Good afternoon, everyone. Next, you are going to hear a presentation from Professor Han Jie Zhao. Professor Zhao is currently a professor at the Department of Electrical Engineering, National Donghua University. And also, he is the president of Donghua University. Professor Zhao had been the president of National Yilan University and the director of the Computer Center for Ministry of Education in Taiwan. His research interests include IPv6, cross-layer design, cloud computing, IoT, and the 5G mobile networks. Today, he's going to give us a presentation entitled Application and Development of IoT in B5G. Ladies and gentlemen, let's welcome President Zhao. Dear all the honorary guests and attendants either on site or through internet, it is my great pleasure through the kind invitation from Dr. Chen Huai En to invite me here to deliver a talk for IEEE Sensors Council Summer School. So before I formally start my talk, let me briefly introduce about myself and the campus I'm now serving. Uh, I'm currently serving as the president of the National Donghua University and I have been chosen to serve quite a lot of uh, distinguished journal as an editor-in-chief or associate editor and I have uh, awarded several uh, good awards of course uh, for example, a survey paper award or gold survey paper award in 2020, best paper award, and uh, uh, a lot of other things such as HCIS, human computer computing intelligence systems award for 2017, and other things and also I'm so honored to have the IET Network Premier Award in year 2014 and IET Wiley Sensor System Premier Award for 2016. Where is my uh, campus? Okay. My campus is located in the east side of the Taiwan which is about a two and a half to three hour bus plus train distance so it's not that far away from the international airport and it's so I'm uh, sincerely welcome all the attended for this conference after the COVID-19 uh, outbreak. Well, you are all welcome to, to my campus because the left down corner is a uh, uh, picture taken live on campus which is showing that Donghua University is the most beautiful university in Taiwan and we have a college that means Donghua University is a very comprehensive university of course and Donghua is only 26 years old however uh, we are ranking number 10 in Taiwan which totally around 160 universities in Taiwan. And there are several other ranking from times, uh, provided from times such as uh, impact ranking were well, number five, Asia University ranking were well, number 12, and uh, emerging economic university ranking we are number 16, young university ranking we are uh, in the world 200 to 250. I guess the most uh, important thing need to be mentioned is for subject ranking in year 2020 for computer science what which I'm, uh, I'm, I'm belonging to uh, is 
ranked as number six in Taiwan, and engineering and technology is ranking number eight in Taiwan. But more than this, the several weeks ago, 2021 subject ranking has been released. Our computer science has been moved one place up to number five in Taiwan. For a 26 years old young university, I guess we are doing not that bad. Some other rankings showing that Donghua University is keeping steady in certain range ranking. So uh, we are not uh, special, especially outstanding only one ranking, but several ranking are almost the same, such as US News, Asia QS ranking, and the Round University ranking for from uh, Moscow. Here's a, a look, particular look of our campus, which has been newly uh, finished uh, building for the College of Arts. Okay, after uh, some sort of self advertisement, let me get back to my talk. Uh, here's the outline of my talk, and uh, uh, I will skip uh, several parts, or I, I will uh, a little bit speedy on several part of uh, my talk because I guess most of you are quite familiar with uh, part of my talk, so I just roughly uh, bring you some ideas regarding the progress of what what is communication currently have and but concentrate on the learning platform deep learning platform for beyond 5g mobile network we had established uh, two years ago um, okay let's start it Yes, the wireless communication, and uh, as we always know, we are limited using those uh, spectrum. So whenever we need to upgrade from 3 to 3G to 4G, 4G to 5G, we have to squeeze the spectrum and try to uh, find a particular range of those spectrum for particular use. That's the reason why for 5G, uh, the vendor, the service provider or the vendor trying to move a little bit up to the millimeter wave so that we can, in that particular range, can provide more spectrum for service provider to use. And what a coincidence, each generation, the separation for each the time gap between each gener generation is about around 10 years but I'm certainly quite sure for the 6G or beyond 5G it will be less than it should be less than 10 years because I guess United States trying to push you very hard to move to 6G, 6G as soon as possible and of course here are some uh, from 1G to 3G to 4G, I guess for 4G, we are trying to connect everyone together or should connect everyone into the internet. But for the 5G, we are trying to connect everything together. So beyond, besides the voice, message, internet, multimedia, there will be quite a lot of application regarding Internet of Things to be connected into the fifth generation. As predicted, uh, we always know uh, uh, the in year 2021, there will be more than 28 billion devices connected to the Internet. Within it, only 15 billion, oh, sorry, only 13 billion uh, belonging to mobile phone, PCS, those, those uh, traditional mobile devices. However, the rest of the 15 billion will be the all kind of different IoT devices like a, a self-driving car, or robots, 
and even the solar cell uh, it can be intelligent connected to the internet quite a lot of uh, important uh, company has uh, made up their mind um, made their own progress on uh, 5G, uh, 5G trend and also there is a, a so-called uh, next generation mobile network group they, they set up design a principle separated into radio for network and operation and management so for each division or for each section there are uh, several topics need to be dealt with such as for network they are create common possible call uh, minimize the number of entity and uh, functionality seems like that there are some next generation mobile network they're trying to build up an ecosystem and guidance to uh, E2E architecture and evalu evaluation test and proof of concept result is also very important. Here are those uh, uh, companies and even the university who joined the NGMM uh, group. And for there is another group called IMT 2020 promotion group. It's a major challenge. They designed a major challenge for future IMT systems. You can take a good look. I guess uh, we all come to a, a very uh, unique or, or come to the same conclusion with the demanding for higher user experience data rate, of course, and zero latency as small as possible. And that means sm as small as possible and higher density of connection devices, higher traffic volume density higher mobility, higher energy efficiency, all those factors are very important for uh, 5G and they are, we are doing very hard to meet these uh, demands. So for IMT 2020, of course, their uh, technical performance requirement has a, a requirement based on the key capability and there will be uh, five additional requirements for peak spectral efficiency, reliability, bandwidth, things like that. So if we can really achieve the, what they require for IMT 2020, I guess uh, for those eight uh, requirements, we can meet the requirement pretty well. However, for the fifth generation or for the user, they are all kind of different demanding, such as for the right up corner, for immersive 360, for those of ARAR user, they are demanding throughput to be very high and high. But the latency is around 50 to 100 milliseconds, reliability is medium to high. However, if you are dealing with those industry robotic, the throughput is very latency demanding to be much lower to 1 to 10 milliseconds, reliability should be very high. So there are three different uh, demanding, uh, briefly divided into three, four. One is ultra reliable, low latency connection. And the other, the second one, enhanced massive bandwidth, mobile bandwidth requirement, and enhanced mobile uh, machine type connection. These three type, three three different factor or three different section, briefly can cover all kind of uh, users' demandings. Here are the three GPP fifth generation going on currently. We are uh, three GPP uh, in 2020 July 3rd 2020 already uh, released uh, R16 being finished. Uh, that means uh, 2020, in June 30, 5G for the first uh, standardization uh, form, uh, protocol is ready by June 30th. 
and uh, so therefore all those vendors can start to deploy the fifth generation follow those uh, 3GPP uh, protocols and of course next new radio needs uh, some other technology uh, besides LTE because they are demanding those spectrum from 6 gigahertz as high as to 100 gigahertz that means a millimeter wave so next radio will choose OFDM as their medium uh, connection medium and several technology of course been bring forward such as scalable OFDM based air interface and the flexible bit based framework and in August uh, 2016 16, CGPP has agreed to use CP-OFDM as the 5G new radio uplink downlink uh, waveform the MEM waveform so we have uh, advanced channel coding so they can be uh, utilized for all different kind of uh, uh, frequency demanding or speed demanding such as uh, when you are broadcasting or when you are a household when are you, you are in a household or when you are driving a car in a high speed so that's uh, another is a uh, MIMO okay MIMO you can uh, using uh, quite a lot of uh, antenna to use in beam focus uh, so you can uh, effectively uh, reduce the delay and using and low down the expense of course and you can use in the mobile millimeter wave and beam forming, beam tracking enable wide millimeter wave bandwidth for extreme capacity and throughput, of course. Several functions have been introduced, such as authentic server function AUSF and uh, access and mobility management function AMF and the data network DN and, and structured data storage function UDSF, network exposure function NEF, network repository function NIF, network slice selection function NSS4F, and the policy control function PCF, and so on and so forth. There are quite a lot of new functions being introduced. So that's based on the 3GPP TS23.501. It's the system structure, including those uh, all those network functions. And based on the Relix 16, we are using a 5G new radio and license spectrum will be using along with license spectrum. So so that uh, that means we are trying to use every bit available spectrum in the 4G 3GPP release 12 uh, formally define LTE-U to that means LTE-unlicense and so for the uh, 5G uh, is follow those uh, release 16 and being improvised or being enhanced in release 14 and therefore we have uh, bring those uh, into so-called LAA technology. It will be even better than LTE-U. Relix 16 has several uh, features to improve the MIMO uh, efficiency and functions, such as enhancing the multi-user MIMO to support higher ranks and supporting multiple transmission and the reception point and better multi-beam management improving reference signal to reduce peak to average power ratio and extending uplink coverage things like that so in order to uh, broaden our application or uh, such as uh, using our being used in the factory automation 
we demanding the extra reliable, extra low latency, such as URLC. For this kind of requirement, Relief 16 also include the so-called supporting 99.9999% reliability upgrade. And uh, at the same time, trying to maintain millisecond latency. So trying to renew the e URLC can do something like that by using uh, coordinate multi-point COMP communication and uh, spatial diversity and uh, channel polarization and those kind of technology being introduced. So the increased redundancy and more reliable, flexible scheduling can be expected. Since 5G is going to be using millimeter wave, of course, we are expected it will be even more power consuming than before. Therefore, power efficiency will be a very important issue here. Relief 16 will bring in several uh, power saving function features such as wake up signal and so that your devices can beforehand know how when to stop the transmission and when into go into the low power consumption mode or jump to the next discontinuous reception uh, mode so we can uh, save the power and uh, at the same time the those features are trying to also enhance the mobility handoff uh, so that you can predict your handoff uh, function so that when you're doing those uh, handoffing or uh, handover you can reducing your uh, interruption time and uh, by using those conditional handover or uh, those uh, report beforehand and then for uh, master sale group uh, air recovery uh, technology can be used as as long as uh, we are doing the handoff. And Relic 16 also trying to expand the 5G network coverage, so and extended the public uh, networking coverage uh, supporting, and that's the uh, another major feature of fifth generation that means we are going to provide a massive connection for internet of things uh, it's very very useful when you are trying to deploy iot so relief 16 can also uh, provide those time sensitive networking uh, into into uh, to meet their requirements uh, in order to uh, merge those uh, time sensitive uh, networking stuff, uh, we are going to do our best to try and minimize the, uh, those uh, wireless connection, uh, random radio accent network, uh, the, what their influence regarding uh, those uh, time sensitive network or time sensitive demanding. So, Therefore, we can have a time determinist packet delivered. So, also Relay 16 provide those new interference uh, measurement technology. They have a very stable deployment will be established and uh, base station to the end user devices interference will be mitigation and time division duplex uh, will be even more easily to achieve. And Relic 16 also including some sort of 500 megahertz unlicensed spectrum downlink using for uh, and uh, 100 megahertz uplink upward using uh, that kind of a connection uh, requirement and that so before then uh, this kind of connection has already been provided for uh, vehicle to 
everything, okay, communication vehicle to everything for safety purpose. And Relic 16 using those network new radio uh, as a basic to provide uh, coordinate driving and uh, uh, such as uh, we can use in the multicast communication and on the fly multicast group and also at the same time distributed synchronization for uh, QX, QoS purpose. Uh, for those uh, technology being introduced, a uh, new kind of uh, feature can improve uh, self-driving car, uh, the safety and efficiency of the safe driving car. So here are the brief summary regarding uh, what we are demands for fifth generation. I guess everyone should be very familiar with that already. And uh, I have to mention that this paper has been cited more than 250 times. So if you are very interesting on fifth generation, you should take a good look of this paper, the 10 key enabling technology for fifth generation. And multi-stream aggregation can be uh, achieved through three different technology like a uh, boosting sublayer, aggregate all the stream and so that user end can um, obtain uh, the most uh, benefit from using this kind of uh, boosting uh, IT and uh, boosting port and boosting carrier stuff. And I guess many in China already using the CRAN. I will skip this part. And for edge computing or fork radio access network is very demanding uh, for, for the fifth generation because uh, we are trying to achieve uh, low latency purpose. So there are some sort of uh, introduction like this. Uh, when you are using uh, normal speed, uh, of course you are using uh, the a traditional connection through CRAM. But however, if you are uh, in some uh, uh, particular position, you're using D2D -D mode, or maybe using uh, some sort of coordination mode, relay mode, sorry. And then finally using the coordination mode, local distributed coordination mode. Uh, so here are the uh, fork radio access network uh, example. Of course, we are going to experience all kinds of handover uh, in fifth generation or even in beyond 5G. Network slicing will be very, very important for uh, 5G because we're going to demanding uh, uh, flexibility and computing, heavy computing, and all that stuff, and also meet the uh, requirement of the industry 4.0. Flexibility is very important, so therefore uh, network slicing is a uh, uh, very perfect uh, perfect choice for us uh, to be chosen to provide it, to provide those kind of uh, innovation. Based on the TS2022.261, network slicing will uh, will allow the vendor to provide uh, network connection to different kind of uh, uh, demands or requirement, such as priority, rating, policy control, safety, and mobility. And also there may be some uh, uh, difference between uh, what you require, the function requires, such as delay, mobility, capability, and reliability, and data rate. Or maybe for particular users such as MPS user, public safety user, customer user, roaming user, or even the MENO user. So network sizing can provide a whole network function including wireless uh, connection uh, and also uh, provide all kind of network slicing, network slice because uh, fifth generation going used to use a high spectrum 
So the coverage range will be smaller than 4G. Therefore, the base station, the total number of base station 5G will be much, much more than before. But in order to lower down the deployment uh, expense, how to share uh, sharing the access network or doing the co-constructing will be a challenge. So, uh, so several countries have been doing that. However, who to build it, who invest, who maintain it, who will take over those bill <laughs> to, to uh, provide service, uh, it will be uh, quite a lot of challenge for all those vendors to need to talk about. And this paper provide the uh, 5G communication, wireless communication, uh, very uh, typical uh, environment. Or, and uh, messy mobile connection and ultra reliable low, con low latency connection need to connect it to acquire a lot of IoT devices. And uh, messy machine type communication and uh, enhanced mobile broadband and uh, URLC. You can see all different challenge. So you can, if you are interested, you can take a good look of this paper, of course. 5G America, the white paper also point out that there are three different direction for home to home, home to machine, but I'm sorry, human to human, human to machine, machine to machine, different using. And there are several applications for 5G. One is using that, using fifth generation onto uh, agriculture so that you can providing a more intelligent agriculture. Uh, for example, in our campus, we we have a very close uh, cooperation with a local farmer because they are trying to. They are always fond of uh, planting uh, watermelon. However, it's really very tedious and very time-consuming, and also manpower-consuming to trying to figure out how many watermelon totally we have. Because whenever you are trying to sell it. You, you should have a rough number uh, totally how many watermelons. So you th therefore we are providing them using the UAV or uh, the drone to fly up to the sky and then using all sort of IoT stuff or using those uh, camera uh, to take the picture and then calculate the total number of watermelon for the farmers and uh, make sure the error rate is within 5% or 3%, which uh, the watermelon dealer uh, will uh, accept that kind of uh, error, error rate, error rate. And this is a 5G teller operated driving with Huawei. 5G is coming for a super connected world. The car industry is one of the first verticals to take advantage of cutting edge 5G solution for improving road safety. Huawei is spending. And of course, that's a 5G uh, smart factory, 5G As part of UAV, our research and standardization, and 5G for 5G. XR. World's first draw. Different, all different kind of 5G regarding healthcare and all those things, medical increase. Been using quite a lot. Now I'm trying to uh, bring you a rough idea for why we're going to move to 6G because to be honest, uh, 4G is quite enough. Okay, we can take a look of a high uh, resolution film such as 4K easily using 4G already, and uh, almost we can connect to everyone, everywhere, anytime. However, 
we all still demanding uh, for sixth generation uh, what really want because when those AR, VR, virtual reality, augmented reality and uh, intelligent soft self-driving car is, are so popular they have uh, quite a lot of uh, data uh, transmission and storage being generated for example for medical purpose uh, almost uh, every person if you uh, put some wearable devices and maybe implant some intelligent devices into your body for each individ individual every second you can provide one terabyte up to 10 gigabit per second one terabyte static and one 10 gigabit per second dynamic information if under the emerging circumstance it will under also uh, demanding high speed moving and uh, on time live transition uh, uh, in, in on time interconnection with the hospital and I guess 5G is still uh, a little bit uh, difficult to meet this requirement and by at the same time the spectrum is limited so and how should we squeeze even more spectrum or using MIMO and uh, millimeter way to solve the spectrum problem however you as we always know using millimeter wave the coverage range will be shortened than before and in, but so that intelligent spectrum sharing codes constructing as I mentioned before will be uh, become a nece necessary and at the same time from 1G to 4G we are always using the cell cellular networking uh, therefore the, the reason one of the main reason is that we may, may uh, increase uh, spectrum usage efficiency and therefore your capacity will be also increased however uh, using the cell cell phone uh, structure and um, also complicate the uh, spectrum management and complicate the end user uh, get into the, uh, the mobile system and at the same time uh, how to uh, uh, deal with that because uh, it will certainly block the, your uh, improvement for uh, or development for fifth generation so maybe in the future supercell will be the key core, core idea for the sixth generation there's several uh, supercell you can take a good look and using uh, uh, Google you can take a good look to see what's going on in the future and based on the ITU-D 5G enable industry demanding even more vertical application usage such as intelligent IoT or maybe even <coughs> AIoT in the in the future so at this time although we are all, all already demanding uh, as a low uh, latency as low as possible uh, into one millisecond to 10 millisecond however in the future or at this time some sort of specific requirement even demanding peer-to-peer -peer latency to as low as 0.1 millisecond which and also even lower to 0 0.02 millisecond which uh, really will bring a lot of challenge to 5G and that's what 6G is going to deal with another reason is that uh, currently our wireless communication only cover 70% of the population on earth and 20% of the area land area but you cannot ignore that there are still 80% land area and 95% the ocean area 
without any signal coverage. Therefore, integrated space terrestrial satellite communication and the satellite Internet of Things must be introduced to solve this uh, problem. And how to do uh, how to uh, compatible with these two technology will be a very big challenge because uh, in the space and also trying to solve on the water communication, they, there will be quite a lot of technology challenge on that. For example, the, the figure on the top, the left hand side is an integrated space terrestrial satellite communication structure and the satellite uh, can be uh, divided, can be grouped like a, a LEO, MEO, GEO. And uh, the right hand side, when you're using drone assisted cellular network and using that, combining with those satellite communication in order to increase your coverage area. And Mobile cellular network today covers only 60%, as I just mentioned, and uh, so we have to try to cover. But one of the good news is uh, the, the founder of the Tesla, Musk, just released that SpaceX can provide uh, downlink regarding approximately 140 megabit per second, which is very, very fast, those kind of satellite communication compared to satellite communication. And in the future, uh, SpaceX and Amazon are going to uh, launch quite a lot of low orbit satellite and trying to achieve the so-called everything together. X on internet, XOT. However, there will be still a lot of challenge for beyond 5G and 6G, like security problem and uh, uh, contradiction between complexity and reliability to the relationship between artificial intelligence, which is very hard now, and those uh, be between artificial intelligence and 6G development. Now, development IoT, I will go through it very quick. Okay, The first uh, IoT have been introduced in year 1974. What's that? It's a, a ATM machine, right? In 2015, already those kind of devices being increased 233%. And they, we are expecting in the, no, not expecting, in the end of this year will be even more than uh, 250,000 uh, devices uh, being introduced. Uh, so quite a lot of uh, IoT devices will be uh, will be implemented, such as a water meter, electricity meter, gas meter, things like that. So in order for that kind of purpose, uh, one of the 5G fifth generation user case is a massive device connection. Uh, currently, 4G is not able to do that. So IoT devices uh, will be using light spectrum and unlicensed spectrum or even the LoRa unlicensed spectrum uh, to solve the IoT devices problem, uh, make sure CGPP can uh, move into this, uh, this market. And currently for fourth generation, LoRa has a compare, uh, we are, there are two main technology for IoT connection, LoRa and BIoT. I guess LoRa is basically for application purpose and BIoT is for uh, coverage purpose. So uh, LoRa using a license band and BIoT using a license band and supporting by all those service providers, traditional service providers. Uh, so I guess uh, BIoT will dominate the market uh, sooner or later. If you're demanding uh, more uh, bandwidth, then you can still use the message, uh, enhanced message type communication to provide you uh, even more bandwidth than uh, MBIoT. 
here are the example uh, by merging the IoT and the fifth generation uh, devices. Uh, will be the IoT application, including Smart City Industry 4.0, and uh, using LoRa and BIoT can be connected to the internet. And there will be a lot of platform and infrastructure to collect those information uh, gathered by those IoT. And through this this uh, platform, we can develop all kind of uh, application, all kind of service to our uh, users. And smart city, I guess everyone should be very familiar with that. I will skip that, skip that, skip that too. And smart healthcare, uh, I guess uh, health plus big data platform uh, with uh, help of the artificial intelligence. A lot of people may get jobless uh, in the future because they are considering a lawyer, doctor. The, can be replaced by those uh, artificial intelligence. And of course, there are a lot of Internet of Things challenge. Challenge for Internet of Things, security and privacy will be things like that. As long as you put so many intelligent devices around you, your privacy and security will easily be re revealed. For example, you're using Google Map every month. Google Map will provide you uh, your pass for the whole month, your road pass, driving pass in the whole month, where you driving from, where to where, which city you've been staying, and things like that. Once this kind of information being released, then everyone know where are you going, where you were going, and where you have been staying. That's the problem of the modern world, of course. And uh, beside that, quite a lot of uh, uh, unit being installed, uh, those uh, internets. Uh, Dartner predict that IoT devices will be, as I mentioned before, will be to 26 billion. And so along with those me billions of devices, quite a lot of garbage uh, information being gathered. Now we're using cloud to load down the cost. However, uh, if you put everything on the cloud, uh, you will lower down your efficiency for sure. Therefore, uh, Cisco can provide the so-called fog computing. And there's a, uh, what is fog? Fog computing is something like edge computing. However, the, the only small difference between fog computing and edge computing is that fog computing trying to push uh, edge computing try to push uh, computing and storage as to the user end as possible, but for computing will somehow in between. So that's what deep learning can keep in, kick in to play an important role when to decide it, which part should be put in the cloud, which part should be put in the fall. And here is an example when you're using for computing. Uh, if you are a stadium, you miss the important uh, uh, shot when the player sh shooting the, uh, the ball. However, you want to replay those important moments. And within the stadium, there will be maybe uh, 1,000 people demanding to replay the, those uh, important moments. And for computing can easily solve the problem. And when using for computing, you can lower down your uh, loading and uh, when you're using virtual reality uh, to, do, to do because virtual reality need quite a lot of uh, image recognition those image recognition will be stored in the cloud and of course you will delay your augmented rec recognition uh, recognition so if you combining aug augmented recognition and the four computing together and um, of course, you will you you will decrease the delay. I guess self-driving car is another important uh, application for uh, for computing. So challenge for uh, for computing is or uh, is like as before. Uh, one I mentioned only several of edge caching. 
The first is edge caching, and what's edge caching? That means how big your fork should be. If you put your fork to be as big as, as, big as cloud, then what do you need a fork for? And there's, there are also discovery synchronization, centralized points, and standardization issues, quite a lot of standardization issues. And development of AI, because my time is quite going to run out. So I guess all the people should be quite aware of the deep learning nowadays, divided to be three different important algorithms supervised learning and supervised learning and things like that i guess this should be very important because uh, uh, you, you combine all different uh, topic for network uh, in mapping to uh, some specific uh, deep learning method such as uh, access point selection it will be continued Consider as a supervised learning. D2D communication will be considered as a, a, a unsupervised learning, things like that. And also, there are quite a lot of different algorithms belonging to three different learning stuff. You can take a good look. Okay, here is the deep learning platform we've been built for the past three years. And the first year we are trying to de deployment of deep learning platform. And the second year we implement, implement all kinds of network function I mentioned in the early of this, this speech. And finally, for this year, we're trying to finalize to provide a self-organization deep learning platform. As you can take a look, good look, uh, when we deploy deploy the deep learning platform, we, we separate into the B5G access layer. This uh, layer we've been built already, and then we're trying to build the core network layer because the, uh, the B5G access layer belong to the, the first three years, uh, eight, seven years ago, the project, seven years ago. So, and then lately, recently, we are going to, uh, or two years ago, starting from two years ago, we're trying to uh, install the core network layer and deep learning, deep learning service centers. As you can see, this is the process of deep learning platform. It divided into data processing platform and data training platform. Data, uh, sorry, data pre-processing platform. The, the main function for data pre-processing platform uh, you're trying to uh, divide uh, to analyze the data and trying to set up the model. Data training platform in trying to uh, do the deep learning uh, calculation, and so uh, information will be uh, goes through the edge server to do the data pre-processing, and this kind of edge server can be uh, co-located with the base station so that can provide, uh, because base station can provide uh, limited computing resources, such as uh, you are using your cell phone, notebook, uh, PDA, things like that. And through those uh, four computing uh, technology or function, so we can uh, avoid all the information uh, coming from or going to the cloud you will use up quite a lot of your traffic. And after those uh, pre-processing, this information will be uploaded to the cloud server. Cloud server will depend on different kind of uh, network requirement uh, using different kind of deep learning method um, to do the model training. After the training, model will be sent back to the base station prepared to be used in the future. And so the second stage is trying to uh, data training platforms and data pre-processing pre platform is two independent platform. And in order to make them to be uh, do those automatic deep learning process, we have to, uh, to couple these two platforms together. And so after 
beyond 5G platform can use those model directly and how to make sure they to be local maximized and how to uh, increase the deep learning efficiency um, so we are um, also how to improve those work functions such as fork management and uh, traffic classification for security and core network and mobility management and edge computing hotspot management things like that will be uh, these functions will can be uh, using uh, to enhance your deep learning process for the third year uh, we are trying to uh, uh, make sure our uh, deep learning uh, efficiency to be uh, as good as possible so uh, our uh, deep learning platform using GPU TPU to do the low balancing and also there will be network access management and collecting all those data big data and trying to analyze it and uh, providing security management and core network management and edge computing management and mobility management and interference between base station are also uh, trying to uh, try to make it make the whole thing to be even better than before here are the self-organizing deep learning platform and providing all those uh, uh, network function as I mentioned and here are the platform we've been built okay uh, according to the network structure we have a CRAN and using user and using a sim com sim car and the stage uh, using a Huawei uh, use cell phone and um, because we are using uh, the so-called physical my administration function we can easily uh, re change the registration information on the SIM card so whenever uh, ENOB connected uh, with the evolved packet call um, they will automatically get into the uh, home subscriber and uh, trying to see whether there's a uh, there the information is correct or not uh, if they cannot find the SIM information we will reject the connection and here are some uh, integrate edge computing and cloud computing together and you can see that uh, easily see that and here are some several examples we have actually build those uh, CRAN, ENOB, and Evolve Packet Core and these are those uh, pictures regarding all those stuff live picture we being built and here are some uh, example particular example when using uh, Wireshark you can take a good look of uh, MME, the com communication between MME and the ENOB, and OAI, and all kind of uh, signal message. You can uh, take a good look of that. So, and OAI will gather those radio frequency like a receive signal and channel frequency response and uh, the so-called uh, physical uplink control channel and physical uplink share channel those information uh, will be uh, recorded and by observe, by looking at those information and those uh, you can take a good look of signal strength signal strength and and the so-called channel quality indication to see the uh, signal quality and therefore base station can assign allocate the 
resource block, the, the better resource block, so you can gather a better transmission efficiency. Here are the example we are using a uh, YouTube and the speed test to see what our platform been doing. And you can see that after we playing the tape, uh, the, the maximum downlink will be 32.5 megabit per second, uplink will 4 megabit per second. However, when after, and if you are demanding a lower connection speed, it will be uh, 0.5 megabit per second. Uh, apparently, uh, end user devices will be uh, influenced by OAI uh, parameters such as uh, transmission, receiving gain, and the reference signal power, permeable initial receive target power. And so there, therefore, we gather all those information and put it back to our deep learning input information and trying to train a model. That in the future, we can provide appropriate resource to the appropriate uh, demand or requirement. And we're using mobile NetBeast version 3 CNN lightweight model to predict the network connection. Uh, we are a little bit better than convolution LSTM, but the training time and parameter uh, is, have been reduced quite a lot. This is the throughput of two different base stations. Um, and roughly speaking, we can predict the uh, traffic uh, change. And for our subproject too, we are developing deep learning based security fuzzy uh, testing uh, functions or testing tools. And through this, you can see, through this figure, you can easily see that uh, after we're connecting uh, several different end user devices such as Qualcomm, Snapdragon 630, 800, 810, 820, 835, and Intel, and Qualcomm, things like that, the result shows that the proposed system can generate and cover more than 90% of protocol of beyond 5G mobile connection access network into it. Uh, that's quite a, quite a, uh, acceptable uh, result we can have. And by uh, use, receiving, collect, collecting all different kinds of payload through the deep learning to distinguish the user service into such as MPIoT or UAV or 4K videos or even Facebook. So then later on, we're using CNN based method to divide the packet and try to test the different payload size. And we, you can see that the accuracy is pretty high. And combining with the edge computing with IoT and AI, and putting your AI model into those edge servers, we can provide some sort of real-time services, um, such as a left-hand side uh, is our uh, Subproject for system structure, it being divided into three layer. The first layer which should be IoT devices. The second layer is MEC. The third layer is uh, cloud. So we using MQTT broker because all kind of different edge devices may using different uh, protocol. So MQTT broker can easily you know, gathering uh, communicate with different. Uh, IoT devices and uh, so that IoT devices and edge server communication can be easily achieved. As you can see from the, this diagram, and interference between base stations is quite important for uh, beyond 5G or 5, 5G beyond 5G. <coughs> so building interference into Terrain, terrain interference and large obstacle interference by using CNN model to do the base station deployment, try to avoid those interference, interference beforehand. Okay, 
uh, here's my conclusion. The edge computing is very important for even 5G and beyond 5G. And different network use have appropriate deep learning algorithm. Integrate edge computing and cloud computing expect to provide greater performance efficiency for beyond 5G platform. And there are many applications can be implemented on beyond 5G platform, which based on edge computing and AI, such as security management, interference management, access point selection, mobility management, and so on and so forth. Okay, then there's, uh, there's about all I'm going to talk and five minutes about my time. And again, Donghua University is only 26 years old, but we are standing firm and trying to make sure our campus is to be globalization. And thanks for listening. And hopefully I can see you all on campus or even better, I can see you see you in the world in in a couple of months after a couple of months the pandemic is really hurting us uh, i've been uh, house arrest or been ground for exactly one year till december 30th so i'm looking forward to seeing you all in the world soon thank you so much bye now